A Kasori Digital Oven Air Fryer Review. Is this worth it? Does it work well? I'm gonna explain all of this. I'm Urdashi, my blog is twosleepers.com, and I'm also the author of two best-selling air fryer cookbooks. I'm also very clumsy, as you can tell. Two best-selling air fryer cookbooks, so I really do know what I'm talking about when it comes to air fryers, and actually Instant Pots and Keto. So let's talk about this oven. The first thing I need to tell you is that they sent me this oven for review. Uh, I get a lot of things for review. If I don't like something, I don't, I don't review it. Uh, I'm gonna review this because I think it's a good option for a lot of people. The most comparable thing to this one is a Breville Smart Oven Air. That one is $400. This one is less than $200. Uh, it's also a whole lot lighter. The Breville is pretty heavy. Uh, and once you put it in place, you can't move it. This one is actually a whole lot lighter and you can lift it up very, very easily and move it around. Having said that, if you really wanna get the most use out of your air fryer, put it in somewhere where it can stay plugged in and you won't have to think twice. That's how all of my air fryers are. So let me explain what this comes with. It comes with this rotisserie rack thing. Of course, it comes with a user manual, which one doesn't. Uh, it comes with this uh, rotisserie rod, two little forks for your chicken to go in there. Um, it comes with, you know, various things. You don't need those recipes, use my recipes. Um, it comes with a little rack, a little roaster racky thing, and then it comes with uh, an air fryer basket. All of these are extremely well made and fit in and out of there uh, very, very easily. So. One of the things that I want to see when I'm doing one of these um, is can I use my regular uh, baking things. I'm a gadget geek, I have a ton of appliances. Now this oven tells you that it'll fit a 5 pound chicken, that it'll fit a 13 inch pizza, and that you can cook 12 muffins in it. So I was like, well let me see if I can use my regular muffin pan in it. Let's see how that works. This is a regular muffin pan. Now in fairness, it has a lot of extra room on the sides, and I can tell you this one is not gonna fit in there, okay? This one is 16 inches across and it does not fit. However, I have a smaller donut pan, for example. This looks like a regular size donut pan. Fits in there very, very comfortably. I have uh, a silicone six uh, cup muffin pan. Oh, this was a 12 one. My husband decided one day that we needed to fit it in the air fryer, so he cut it in half while I wasn't paying attention. Whatever. Anyway, imagine that this, this was just one piece. Here's a six one, here's another one. Fits in there quite comfortably. So you just have to, when you buy things that go with it, you're just gonna have to buy things that are no more than 14 inches across. Similarly, I have this pan. It's a quarter sheet pan. It's so grungy right now because it's so well used, well loved. This is about 13 inches across and it fits in very comfortably. So you will be very easily able to find other things that fit in this quite easily. Okay, let's talk about the footprint before I show you how this works, okay? This is gonna be the biggest issue for most of us is do I have enough room? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compare it to other um, air fryers that you may or may not be familiar with. So I've reviewed this Ninja air fryer. This is a pretty standard air fryer. It has, it's a smaller one. It has the footprint of a regular egg shaped air fryer. This is how much space I have left, so a little bit over 10 inches. So this one is a lot wider than your standard egg-shaped ones. This is another Kasori that has over 1,000 positive reviews. They did not send me this. I bought this on my own to test, which I really need to do. Um, it's a huge capacity. It's actually a really nice looking air fryer. Um, you see, even compared to that, it, this, this thing is a lot bigger. Oh my God, I need to work out. Like I'm already out of breath from just lugging these things around. Anyway, so it's a little bit bigger footprint. So make sure you have enough room for it. Um, don't ask me the specs, y'all. I'm sure they're on the website. I'm very bad with specs of stuff like that. I'm better off telling you how it cooks and how it compares. Okay, but on the other hand, yes, it is much bigger, but look at everything else it does. Okay, so here are all the functions. And you can, this thing, this knob, allows you to navigate through the menu. So you have toast. Now look at what happens here, okay? When you have toast, you can move toast from one to seven setting. You've got bagel, similarly, moves through lighter and darker. Look what happens when you put in pizza. You automatically get 450. When you go to bake, 350 starts at 30 minutes. Roast starts at 400 for an hour. Air fry starts at 400 for 25. These are the default settings. Broil, 450. Cookies, 350 for 11 minutes. I can't read backwards. Oh, rotisserie, 400 for an hour. Dehydrate, 150 for 12 hours. 
uh, ferment 90 so this is good for like making yogurt making um, uh, bread starters things like that uh, 90 for an hour and warm is 180 so those that I showed you were the default settings but the good news of course is that it's highly customizable so instead of warm if I wanted to slow cook and I wanted to slow cook at 220 here's what I would do I would press once I get the temperature I can change the temperature to 210 I press a second time the time starts to flash and I can cook for hours and hours and hours here's my slow cook function just going on and on and on okay so similarly with air fry it is super um, customizable so it's kind of nice to have a place to start with but it's also nice to be able to customize okay let's talk about how this rotisserie thing works I have many skills I'm a very talented person I am completely spatially challenged, like I'm terribly spatially challenged. And I don't believe in reading manuals. I feel like design should be intuitive and you should be able to figure it out. So I'm not going to read a manual. We're going to figure out how to do this. So here's the rod. And even somebody, someone who is as spatially challenged as me notices, let me show you on the top view, that there are two different ends. Here's one end, here's the other end, and they look quite different. This end is going to go into a little tube here. Once it's in, you snap this one in. It's actually really, really simple, okay? So you just have to remember which side goes where, and it snaps in very easily. It comes with these hook-looking things. The purpose of these hook-looking things is to grab onto your chicken, like so. So you jab that in so the chicken doesn't spin on the, on the rotisserie. It just goes round and round. So what you would do is you would take this, and with your arthritic, spatially challenged hands, you would put this on here, and you would tighten this screw, okay? Very, very simple. Then you would stick your chicken in here. I didn't wanna mess with the raw chicken while trying to show you all this stuff. So you're just gonna have to imagine that there's a chicken there, okay? And then you would do the same thing on this side and then you would stick your chicken in and depending on how big or small the chicken is, this thing moves, you can do it, you can put it in here. And then when it's time to take off your chicken, you will use this thing then you grab onto it, you will try not to be clumsy, and you will take it out with this thing. Okay, so this is what this is for. If there's a chicken on here, I could demonstrate this better. Anyway, that's what this rack is for. Okay, let me be honest with you. I am not sure that a rotisserie is that useful if you have an air fry function. What does a rotisserie do? A rotisserie turns the meat so that it browns evenly on all sides. But if you think about how an air fryer works, that's what it's doing. It's taking hot air and it's rotating it all around so that all of the, the meal crisps up. However, having it suspended up in the air causes it to drip fat down, which bastes the chicken, and it doesn't have a portion that it's resting on. So when you're doing an air fryer chicken, you might want to turn it upside down. In a rotisserie, you might not have to. Besides, I gotta tell you, I find it infinitely satisfying to watch that chicken go round and round and round. It's mesmerizing for whatever reason. Clearly, I need to play more video games, find some other way to amuse myself. Okay, so that's how this whole oven is set up. There's uh, a couple of things uh, that you have to be very careful about. The outside gets really, really hot. Y'all, it's an oven. It's not super insulated all around. You cannot touch these parts and you need clearance. Now this is like every other uh, toaster oven, air fryer oven, etc. I feel like this one gets a little bit hotter than my Breville, but the Breville sits in one location and it doesn't move. And by the way, it doesn't get $200 worth hotter. Let me be honest about that. One of the really nice things about this oven that I like, which is very unusual, by the way, in, a, in an oven in this price range, is that it tells you where the rack goes. So you see over here, it says bake, roast, warm, ferment, toast, bagel, pizza, air fry, cookies, dehydrate, and broil. And I know this sounds ridiculous, but it's actually not that intuitive if you're not very familiar with what you're doing. But yeah, sure, we know that broil goes here. But where, where do cookies go? Where does pizza go? What do I do if I'm warming, toasting, whatever? So I like the fact that it does that. It tells you where. And you see how easily it slides in? It's actually pretty well constructed. It also has a crumb tray. Okay, this crumb tray is going to be the messiest thing in here. Okay, it's going to be super messy. Uh, I like to put a little silicone mat so that's easy to clean out. Uh, so that I'm not sitting here scrubbing. It's a little bit thin, so you definitely want a silicone mat. So basically what I do is I buy two of these, these little mats, very thin ones, and I put them down here um, and I stick it in here so that when it's time to clean, I just have to clean the mat. And uh, there's enough clearance between the heating element and the silicone mat that they're not touching. But I do worry a little bit about being able to clean this. Here's the good news. 
I see a little bit of maybe nonstick around, but this one isn't nonstick and this one isn't nonstick. I get uh, letters from people who have parrots. Uh, apparently, nonstick is really dangerous for them, and a lot of people just don't like uh, the idea of hi, hi, puppy. My dog is in here. She's come to say hello. Uh, a lot of people just don't like the idea of nonstick. So here's the thing I'll tell you. This crumb tray is going to need cleaning frequently. And what I would recommend to you is do not scrub it. Hi, sweetheart. Don't scrub it, okay? Put it in a sink with hot water and let it just sit there and everything will slide off in about 20 minutes. So this is your crumb tray. I already made a huge mess over here. Okay. Those are all the functions and features that it has. Now, on here, you can turn from Celsius to Fahrenheit. You can turn the fan on and off and you can press start cancel. Now, one of the things that you have to do with this oven is you have to, when you turn it on, it automatically starts to preheat. This can be a good and a bad thing. Uh, it's a good thing for recipes that call for preheating. I believe in ruthless efficiency. I don't preheat an oven and I'm still alive and the food is still good. In these two books, I don't call for preheating in any of them. I take the preheating into account when I give you the cook times. The advantage of an oven like this is it preheats in th somewhere between two and five minutes, depending on the temperature. So of course, you know, if you're preheating to 350, it's gonna heat up a lot faster than if you're heating to 400, which is gonna take longer. You can hear Gracie drinking water. This is just a part of my videos these days. The one problem I have with this oven is that when you press preheat and it preheats, it doesn't just go to a cook cycle by itself. It very annoyingly keeps beeping at you until you press start again. Why they did that, I do not know, but I don't love that. Okay, let's try this. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. So let's try an air fry function because we are gonna make chicken wings in a minute. And I need this at 400 for 20 minutes and I'm gonna press start. See this where it tells us it's preheating? It tells you it's air fry, it tells you it's 400, and it tells you that the fan is on and that it's a time to cook, okay? Listen, apart from Gracie drinking water, you can't hear a thing. I love that about this. It is so quiet, at least during the preheat. We'll see what it's like with the other ones. But the, the smaller egg-shaped ones make quite the racket. So this one is actually very, very quiet. While this is preheating, let's talk capacity. So your chicken wings are gonna go in here. Now, when they talk, hi sweetheart, when they talk about capacity for air fryers, it can be extremely misleading because they will say it's 5.6 quarts, 3.4 quarts, and you think, oh my God, that's a lot of French fries, that's a lot of chicken wings. It is and it isn't. Because as I've explained in some of my other review videos, what matters is not the depth of the basket. What matters is the width. Because for perfect air frying, you want things to be flat. You don't want them to be stacked on top of each other. Meat shrinks a little bit, but you want them to be flat. So let's, let's look at some of the other air fryers that I was talking about. This is the Ninja. If you look at, let me put this up here so you can see it better. Here's this one and here's this. It's got a lot more capacity on these sides for getting in additional food. Here is the other Kasori, which arguably is the largest basket that I have seen. Even compared to that, there's a little extra room in this basket to get stuff on the side. Not uh, a whole lot more, but some more definitely. Okay, so while this preheats, what we are gonna do is we are going to put some frozen chicken wings in here. This is a uh, mm, 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 two and a half pound bag. Now I'm gonna cook all of them because what am I gonna do with that many? We are, however, gonna lay them out to see how much of a bag fits in here, okay? Now, should you be making chicken wings from frozen? You can. Is it the best way? You know, I don't love it that way, I'll tell you why. You really want that skin to crisp, um, and as the water evaporates from this, from frozen ones, um, it's not ideal. However, it's, uh, it, you do all that it means is you have to cook it for longer, and the skin crisps up. So here's my two and a half pound bag. What? That one's for the doggy. I'm not gonna give my dog chicken wings, don't even write to me about it. Okay, see this? It fits in extremely well. Whatever little overlap there is, it's gonna get taken into consideration as the meat shrinks. So let me show you an overhead view. See this? Two and a half pound bag fits in just about perfectly. Now, let me try it in the Ninja, which I love, by the way. I have a great review of this Ninja air fryer. It's gotten hundreds of thousands of views. It's very popular. I think I did a good job. I could shove in some more, but realistically, it takes about half of the ones that this does. So if you're cooking for a family of four, for example, you're definitely gonna want um, this larger one. Okay, you know, here's what I might do. I might actually cook the wings in both of those so we can see 
how they do differently. So let me move to the Kasori rectangle and see how much more it will hold. Okay. This holds a lot more than I had realized. Alrighty, here's the Kasori rectangle one. See that? In this other one, I can get in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more wings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So about almost twice the number of wings as I can in this one. Now I'm gonna cook them half and half so that we can see the difference if there is one. There probably isn't one, so we'll just see how this works. No. Oh. Okay. I was gonna show you how the other Kasori works, but then this thing beeped. See, it beeped, okay? It's gonna keep beeping at me until I press pre a start again, which really I do not love. I don't know why they did it that way. But, oh, oops. Okay, air fry, that is the right level for air fry. I'm gonna put this on here. Oh, so here's an interesting observation. When you're air frying with this basket, you can't have this guy in there. So, I'm gonna move this out because otherwise it's one more thing for me to do. So, when I do these reviews, I often test it for the first time with you guys watching so you can see all the mistakes that can be made and should not be made. All right, there we go. See that? You take this out and you put the, put the um, rack in directly. Okay, see, it still says preheat. So annoying, don't love it. When I press start, it starts counting down. So let's, let me go ahead and start the other uh, standalone Kasori. Okay, we have 10 seconds left. I wanna point out something. Let me just increase the time to a minute here. Two minutes. Um, and press start. Oh, come on, seriously? Don't do that. Obviously what I just did, don't do that. Now we're gonna have to wait for it to preheat again. I do wanna point out that the chicken is not cooked 20 minutes later, okay? Uh, which is unusual for this, uh, uh, for, for chicken wings. And so you may have to, with an oven like this, add in a minute or two extra time when you're cooking. One of the things that I noticed with this is that when it's cooking and you open uh, the door, it does not stop the countdown. Many of the other uh, air fryers, including the air fryer ovens, will stop counting down so that the time that you spend opening it and fiddling around with it and tossing it and turning it, uh, so that that time doesn't go towards the cook time. This one doesn't do that, so you may just have to be um, cognizant of that when you're flipping food over. I just looked at the other one. I'm going to be honest with you, the uh, egg-shaped one is doing a much faster job. Uh, and it, it's intuitive, it makes sense. Uh, it's a much smaller oven, and so to preheat it and to maintain the heat is a lot easier. Those are also insulated, and so they retain heat better. But again, there is no comparison to this for the capacity that this will hold, and also the fact that it does multiple functions, that one is just an air fryer, basically. Okay, this is a little confusing to me. You know I hit the wrong button, it was already at 400. I hit preheat, it's taking forever to preheat, and I don't understand why that's happening. There is no way that you should be doing air fryer cooking without getting yourself a really good thermometer. Um, you cannot tell if the meat is well spiced, you can't tell if it's done or not. Uh, you can't go by uh, looks alone. Now, my dog is in here, who's telling me that the chicken's almost cooked because she has a nose for when the fat starts to drip. Um, but this is the one that I use. This is a, a Therma Pen. Um, it's one of the most expensive ones, uh, but it's actually extremely reliable. I'll show you a less expensive one in a minute. Okay, now, while this is doing whatever it is doing, uh, the Kasori in the back um, has actually finished cooking uh, the wings. I set it also for 400 for 20. Let's take a look at that and see how that did. This is more of what I would expect after 20 minutes, okay? So these wings are really, these are done. Be careful, put it on something that's hot. Get your little thermometer out, stick it in there. Well, try to stick it in there. Okay, 209, they're definitely done. Okay, these don't look fabulous, but let's test and see. Yeah, see these are at 184 and they've been on for 20 minutes also. Um, and for some reason, the stupid thing is still preheating. Come on, you. Okay, I'm, I'm clearly now a little bit frustrated. So here's what we know. Don't get the buttons wrong. Uh, the preheat somehow um, is set for a time, I now believe, rather than uh, temperature, because it started preheat, was already at 400. So maybe they just have it set for a certain length of time, and it is taking longer. Okay, 
It's preheated. That took almost three minutes to preheat. Now I'm going to press start. And is it possible? Yes, it's actually possible to adjust the time as it's cooking. That's good. Okay, these are cooked. They're at 200, 201. But I will tell you, they look quite different from the others. Let's take them out and see. Okay, I'm going to leave these two here for a reason. Let me just close this and I'll tell you the reason in a minute. Okay, there is a difference in the two. They're both cooked. They're both well done. This is the one in the egg-shaped air fryer. This is the one in the, in the um, oven. Uh, the difference to me is that the ones in the egg-shaped ones are a lot browner than this one, but they're both cooked. Now, this is an appearance issue. This is not going to be a taste issue as much. Uh, it's just going to be an appearance issue. So, I could do one of two things. I could either wait and let this cook a little bit longer, or uh, what I'm actually going to try is I'm going to try I'm going to try to broil this. I'm just going to broil for two minutes just for appearances and see what happens. Okay, this is very typical for all oven air fryers. They do take longer than the egg-shaped ones, there's no doubt about it. Now, how much longer? A minute or two, maybe? Um, less than 10% of the time. Um, but you have to adjust for that when you're making recipes with it. For many people, the trade-off is worth it for two reasons. One, the capacity, and two, you're not just buying an air fryer when you buy this, you're replacing, essentially, um, you're using your large oven for a lot of things. So I've got to tell you, since I got my toast, my uh, Breville, uh, and now with this, I have not used my big oven at all. Uh, there are two of us at home, for the most part, um, cooking smaller quantities, and uh, really, even if it wasn't two of us, I can get like a whole cookie sheet at Christmas time, um, you know, in there, a whole set of cookies, like 24 little cookies went in there just fine. Uh, and so this, is, this one's going to be the same way. Okay, there we go. It's broiling really nicely. Yep, 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 yep. So if I really cared about the appearance, what I would do is I would broil it for a minute or two. It does add an extra step that I don't love, but it's totally doable. I will say even with the broil, they're not as, um, wow, don't drop another one. They're not as um, crisply well done as an egg air fryer, but let's just look at these by themselves. Let me bring them over here. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with this chicken wing. Okay, I have a confession to make. <laughs> I'm not a chicken wing fan. So just imagine that I picked this up and went, mm, 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 because I'm not gonna do it. I, they're fine, you know. I like them better with sauce. I have a kochujang chicken wing recipe uh, in, uh, I think, the Everyday Easy Air Fryer. And that's a very, very popular recipe. You might want to try that one. Um, so anyway, so does it, does it air fry well? It air fries well. It takes a little bit longer. Um, in fact, it may take a, a lot longer um, than you might expect. So for a 20 minute cook time, I probably added another three minutes maybe, um, you know, which is uh, one and a half, 15% uh, more, okay? So you just have to be cautious about that. Um, one other thing you need to be aware of, and I have a long review, by the way, of a bunch of different air fryers. One of the other things you need to be aware of with these ovens that can be problematic is that when you clean, you have to clean um, this thing, obviously, and then you've got to clean the bottom every single time, otherwise it's going gonna, it's gonna to flame, which is why I highly recommend getting one of those little silicone mats that goes at the bottom. Now, sometimes you have to clean on the sides, not always. These things, this one, uh, both of these are, are dishwasher safe, so it's not going to be a problem. With an egg-shaped air fryer, um, so actually with these, most of the time, with this type of an air fryer, uh, what I end up doing is I actually just fill this with hot water and soap as it is. Like, I don't even take the basket out. Uh, the basket comes out, as you guys know. basket comes out like that. Um, and then you have all the grease at the bottom here. Uh, I actually don't even bother to take it out when I'm soaking it. I just, I don't scrub, by the way. Um, it's a big mistake that I think people are making. I hear all the time about how my nonstick wore off. If you don't want your nonstick to wear off, do not scrub. Fill it with hot soapy water, walk away. What is the bottom line? The bottom line is, it's a good all-purpose oven. It costs less than half of what the other competitive oven on the market does. Um, it does very many things well. Uh, it has a large capacity. It has multiple functions. It's highly customizable. You can change temperature on and off. You can change uh, times on and off. You can move things up and down. It holds quite a bit. It won't hold every one of your full-size um, pans, but it'll hold many, many of them. Finding accessories for this thing is gonna be a breeze. 
The things that I don't love about it is I don't love that preheating and having to come back and, and press uh, start. For most people, this is not going to be an issue because you will turn it on, you will be more patient than Urgashi, you will be futzing around your kitchen, it's nothing to press on, it bothers me. It doesn't stop the countdown when you open the door, uh, which would have been nice to have. Um, and the, the other problem that it has is true of all toaster oven air fryers, which is they take longer uh, and they're a little bit uh, more surface area to clean, but then that, that's the obvious trade-off. So would I buy it? I think if you're looking for something that's more than an air fryer, I think it's a fantastic deal. I cannot speak to the longevity of this. I haven't had it long enough to speak to it. Uh, but if you look at the reviews on Amazon for Kasori products, they're getting great reviews, thousands of them. Uh, and so obviously they're doing really well. So definitely something to consider. I'm Urdashi, my blog is 2 Thank you for watching. I hope that was helpful.